Welcome to the Never Been Promoted Podcast with Thomas Helfrick. Get ready for a thrilling adventure as we uncover entrepreneurial journeys and life-changing business insights every week. And now your host, Thomas. Welcome to another episode of Never Been Promoted. To unleash your entrepreneur, we uh, help entrepreneurs through the the lives and experience and journeys of other entrepreneurs. And today joining me is R Blank. That's right. His name is actually R. That or he's wanted by the CIA. We don't know. R, how are you doing? I am well, thank you. And ha- how, how are you? Dialing in from the Matrix construct, I see. I am. You know, uh, for those listening, I have an amazing studio. He has studio envy, but I have palm tree envy because he's in Panama, the country, <laughs> not Florida. Listen, it's great to see you again. We, uh, you know, we've uh, had a number of uh, you know, you know, run-ins. conversations, run-ins. run-ins, no run-ins. Right, never met each other in person, but I feel like you know I've I've helped you home from a bar drunk. Like that's how I feel about you. <laughs> yeah, you've helped me home from a bar while you were drunk. That that definitely checks out. Listen, I stopped drinking August 18th. I'm done. Oh, congratulations! I think it's healthier. I think it blocks the sound waves and my electronics better. We'll get into that. It's your business. Yeah. Are you the founder of Healthier Tech? I know you filled out the forms on, you know, for the show. I feel a bit lazy and I think it's easier if you just tell me a little bit more about you, your company, and uh, your kind of role in it. And we'll get into it a little bit today. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't surprise me that you didn't prep for this. So Healthier Tech is, uh, it's at healthiertech.co and it started as a podcast where we cover topics all about how people can help themselves find healthier relationships with technology, with the idea of tech overload, the idea of these devices kind of entering more and more aspects of our lives, and not just you know mentally or spiritually, but actual real health effects. I mean, some of the clearest ones that we see are impact on sleep quality, sleep amount, obviously stress, uh, mental well-being. Even um, we've, we've actually, at any time you bring a chiropractor on to talk about tech, They'll tell you about this epidemic of, of bad posture issues in children these days. It's always because they're looking down at their phones so much. There's so many issues because tech is so pervasive these days and almost entirely unregulated. And it's evolved so quickly before yeah. we've really had a chance to deal, learn how to deal with it. It is really impacting our health in so many different ways. So that's why I started the podcast. So that was in 2020 when tech was, we were really getting tech overload. While we were all locked in, we were working remotely, we were seeing our doctors remotely. And since then, it's evolved to uh, now have a catalog of courses on a wide variety of, of topics related to healthier tech. And then just a, a couple months ago, um, actually just like seven weeks ago, we ran our first online summit, which was a four-day event where we had politicians, scientists, a Nobel Prize winner, doctors all talking about different aspects of the theme that I was just telling you about. I mean, you had me tell politicians. Well, one politician. Okay. A member of parliament from Europe who uh, has spearheaded the legislation called Right to Disconnect, which a lot of North Americans may not know about. I know you're, you're American, but you kind of give off a Canadian vibe. So maybe you do know about this. It's because I'm so friendly. Um, yeah. That's, that's the number one word I'd use to describe you is... Um, It's this legislation that's actually in multiple European countries that is going to be the law in all of Europe where your employer is not allowed to contact you or expect you to be in communication uh, during hours for which you are not being paid. And um, they're they're looking to make this the law of the land. That's why he was at the Healthier Tech Summit. Yeah. That's a slippery slope. We can get into that maybe on another show. Uh, I was going to ask you. See, as a podcast host, I feel like I should, you, you were, you're criticizing me about not being prepared. Now I'm just going to own that persona throughout this. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's back up. You, suggestible. You, right. Uh, yeah. it, it, <laughs> he's so good, guys. He's probably using technology. Here's this. Let's back up a little bit. So first of all, and foremost, let's address the R in the room. Yeah, is that, that, that's what you've been doing this entire time. Correct. Yes. How did you come up with your name? <laughs> uh, I didn't actually. My father did. So that's uh, since I was very, very young, and um, that's that's just sort of stuck. But there's a okay. So I I know the story. I wanted you to explain what R is and why it's uh, why your dad gave it to you. Oh well, he well R is a statistical measure of uncertainty, right? And no, um, uh, no, he he just or is it? It is. It is. Do you see the pun there? Or is it? Oh, 
sometimes you're just too fast for me. Um, no, he, he, yeah, he, he, um, he really liked crossword puzzles, you know, and, uh, that's, that's, I mean, that's the long and the short of it. He really liked crossword puzzles and my two syllable name, especially when you're a third child, you know, because when you're a third child, they never call you by your name. They always go through the first two and then they realize they're calling you. So they'd have to go through all the syllables of all the other ones and then get to me. So eventually he just cut it down to R. And uh, I liked it. I was like, this is cool. Bro, I mean, the uncertainty factor, you had me on uncertainty factor. Lost me at politicians, got me back on uncertainty factor. And okay, so you're traveling, you're, uh, your journey of becoming an entrepreneur is, is very interesting. You know, you're in Panama, uh, the country of Panama, and it was by choice. You weren't asked to leave or anything else. Uh, but talk about your just kind of just give us a little background, a few minutes on on you and how you got to you know be sitting sitting where you are today. Well, yes, I mean, so I don't, I we don't have to go back, and spend too much time on the the incredibly distant past. But uh, thought it was I thought it was appropriate to be on Never Been Promoted because uh, once you explain the idea of the show to me, um, I've actually only ever had one job, uh, and it was for ten months after college, and after that. I left that job and started my first company, uh, sold that. And it, it just, just so everyone uh, who's listening knows, when an entrepreneur says they sold their company, even if they're telling the truth, it, it might not be like this glorious, amazing thing that you, you might think it is. But I sold my first company, moved out to California, started my second company. I got bought out of that one. And that's when I went back to grad school. And then I, I left grad school and I decided to just start my own. So the others had been with partners. This one I was on my own. And, you know, I was a poor grad, uh, grad school graduate and with, with debts and so forth. And so the easiest type of business at that point to start was service. And I had a bunch of skills related originally to graphic design. I moved into computer software engineering and ended up building a pretty cool agency in Los Angeles, software development agency in Los Angeles. Uh, but the more you do service work, in my opinion, and I don't think I'm the only one who says this, the more service work you do, the less you want to do service work. Huh. And so I just had was playing around in, in my in my head with ideas, and uh, uh, eventually came up with one um, that to do a, an actual product, like a physical product that I could design and manufacture and sell. And so that was about ten years ago. And I grew that business out. It's still, uh, I'm still running. It's called Shield Your Body. And it was actually originally, uh, Healthier Tech was originally a project of Shield Your Body. It's only in about the past year, year and a half that I've spun it out as the basis for its own new brand uh, to focus on more on the content side. Since Shield Your Body is much more on the product side, it, I, I wanted to uh, start tackling content through a, to, through a separate brand, a separate company. Yeah, so that, I think... I think that was a little too glossed over, but if you no, don't no, no, I think it's good because the idea is that you you came, you you're well educated, uh, never took to the corporate world. Uh, you're lucky because you figured that out quickly. That it probably isn't for you. Uh, the grad school, it, we could get into reasons why you decided to go do that, but um, the the grad school path, uh, uh, I have my own. I went to law school for about a year or so, and and got to pay that whole thing back without getting a JD. So I, I appreciate. <laughs> But by the way, here's an advice to entrepreneurs. I didn't. I think I included this in my book. That'll be very clear. When you get married, you might want to pre-share how much debt you have in student loans, so you don't almost give your spouse a heart attack with the sticker shock. Yeah. <laughs> or do it the way I did: is show her later, and she's kind of stuck because she signed the papers at that point. So whatever, your call. Anyway, uh, the the idea is you get the, you get an entrepreneurship, and, and and this is what I like. I think if you're doing services for ten years, or you're selling the the products. You're going to evolve or, and, and add different lines mm. for no other reason, just for survival of the business and growth, but just also for just entrepreneurial boredom that you're like, you're looking for something to start something new. It's like the new Sim City map, right? You're always looking for that next thing to add on to help grow and expand your base, de-risk your revenue streams, and, and also keep your brain interested because in the season of life and wherever you're going to be in your entrepreneurial journey, either being just right out of school or on your third or fourth thing. The more things you can kind of tie together that are loosely connected that serve each other but have their own revenue streams, likely the better you're going to do. Uh, That's the theory, yeah. And, and one of the triggers for this was uh, was COVID um, because COVID hit, 
And we were, for our size, reasonably well prepared. Like we, we already, I'd built Shield Your Body to be a remote operation. So there was no office. Everyone was everywhere. Everyone had their own equipment. But our factories that manufacture our products started shutting down. The warehouses that distribute our products throughout North America and Europe, they stopped taking in new inventory. And it was a couple of months that they ended up being very good months for us. But they, there was this whole period where it's like, I, what are we going to do? Like, if, if I can't make product and I can't get it to a warehouse, I can't make money. And I started thinking, well, I really would like to have some virtual product just in case another pandemic pops up or something equivalent to that. You never know when these- Well, but else in your flow cycle, your, your revenue streams right now, if I understand the retail world a little bit, is fourth quarter, right? And so yeah. you're, you're selling fourth quarter holidays, whatever. But the digital world of self-improvement is Jan is first quarter. Yeah. And then no one does anything in the summer. And so, uh, but the idea is that th there's different times and spots where if you can have revenue in each of the quarters based on what the kind of the trends are. Yeah, no, and, and, and it's, it, yeah, and, and you can make it even more precise than that, right? Because after about December 15th, you can't anymore because the carriers are in the US, like the USPS, UPS, FedEx, they're all so overwhelmed. You can't guarantee that orders will get to people in time for Christmas. So right around December 15th is a great time to start, start pitching digital products as little stocking stuffers or additional last minute gifts, things like that. That's a great advice to anybody who's thinking down that path. To, hey, buy a, a course for your friend, you know, get yeah. it. They, you know, somebody has been wanting to be out on audit. That's actually what we're, that's actually what we're doing. And, and uh, the promotion we're going to be running in December is uh, buy buy a cor buy a course for yourself and give a copy to a friend. So it's it's like a BOGO courses. So you can get you can enroll for enroll in it for yourself and give a copy of it to a friend. That's a great idea. And and you, you know as you I know you're about a year into this and you I know you've made a big push for the content. The profitability on the content is so much potentially higher with way less headaches. It'd be interesting if you I'd have to guess that's going to become your full business at some point because you can add in seminars in person. You're in a beautiful yep. part of the world. You could do things that are much more engaging, much higher value, guaranteed revenue sets because you wouldn't have the live thing unless so many people show up. You won't have the digital course once you've built it and marketed it, it becomes a, a capital machine. So yeah. I'm sure. but in plus I can market physical product because the it, it's not exactly the same brand to shield your body in terms of subject matter coverage, but a lot of the people who are interested in healthier tech are high value prospects for Shield Your Body. Exactly. And that's that loosely connected set. Now, there's a third piece missing, which I think we, we, you had talked about at, at one point. It's, it's probably the events. It's something live. It's an experience yeah. where you learn wellness, you learn, you know, uh, whatever it'll be. And those three things working together strengthen your brand, puts in different levels of buyers. And if, I, if I'm thinking about our audience of entrepreneurs, that's how you have to think. You have to start with some kind of core. Don't overthink it. Don't do the entrepreneurial ADD from day one, even if you have endless money and time, which you probably don't. But pick the one thing that you know you can deliver if it's a service or a product. And then think about what's ancillary around it that you can add in as an additional piece and, and move with it. Go with it. And that's, that to me is how you build a really good sustainable business is having ancillary components to your offering. And in specific, where you can get through the sawtooth of revenue by adding other sawtooths of revenue. That yeah, exactly. Totally got. Smooth it out. Yeah, yeah. Because we were talking, I was like, what? Does Q4 really matter? Just make money when you can. And you're like, yeah, it matters. I'm like, okay, in your world, it does. Yeah. And consumer products, it definitely, I mean, unless you're running like a pool supplies business or something, obviously summer is going to be really well, yeah, it didn't. But mm -hmm. But in general, just the average consumer product company, November, December is massive. And then January, February is also still pretty high. Well, yeah. So your pool knowledge is great. So, you know, late March, April, the chemicals and all the things that they're doing to get ready for pools and, uh, you know, whatever it is that these guys sell that they've been in the fall, late at the end of the, um, the summer after the chemical sales and all the lifeguard stuff's done, they're selling all the contracts for managing them. But then, the, you know, they're taking the orders to start building private pools at that time too, because because the approval process. So they're getting revenue through the winter to build and then they're doing commercial. And so there's year long revenue with different streams. Yeah. Or, uh, and so those, that's an example of a, a business you could do is maintenance, this and this. So I mean, it's not a business I, could do, but right. one one could do. I would not want to do that business. No. Yeah. I do, I like to rent pools, meaning go to a hotel, look at it. You know, I know yeah. people pee in it, so that's okay. 
Yeah. And then, you know, you get friends with pools are the best and boats. I, I, um, I mean, actually, we have a boat. I just want to show we have a boat. You, it's really slow though. I don't think you want to go on it. You got to use paddles. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's, let's get, so in your journey, uh, you're down the road quite a ways with this. Uh, I always ask this question of, um, you know, how did you find your first customer? Start with that. So, uh, I, which we, I'm sorry, which business are we talking? Any, any one of them. So like when you, well, actually go back to your original one, you're on your original entrepreneurship. How did you find, you know, the software agency? How did you find that first? Oh, so that soft, yeah. So that software agency grew out of my own. So after grad school, actually during grad school to, to actually, it's funny. As soon as I got into, gra- okay. So you asked why I went back to grad school. There was this thing called the dot-com bust mm. um, back in, you know, 2000 yeah. and and it lasted for a while, especially, you know, and especially obviously in the tech side of things. And like no one was hiring. And I left, uh, got bought out of, of this uh, software company I, I'd built. And I'm looking around and basically there's no opportunities. And I'm like, well, can't hurt to get an MBA. And I was actually thinking to myself, you know, why, why am I going to do this? A, because I got sick of being in investor meetings where I was referred to as a poet. That a poet? Uh, a poet. Yeah. Poets are, are people who aren't engineers. In like the startup world, if you're like on a, a founder, but you're not a software engineer, like a hardcore software engineer, you're a poet. And I, I got sick of being referred to as a poet. And I also thought, well, what if I go down this path of just being a freelancer, I don't, you know, and then I turn, you know, 50 and I don't have a job. It'll be a lot easier to go back and get a job when I'm 50 if I have an MBA. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But that was my thinking. Plus, I was living in California before the crazy UC system tuition hikes. So I got at the, you know, which was a pretty high ranked MBA for a pretty bargain, bargain basement price. So, but anyway, so I, I stepped back a little little too much into the detail there. That's why I went back to grad school. But as, it was literally like as soon as I got in, I started getting clients. And you asked how, and it was just by going, I don't even remember what sites I was using at the time, uh, but I, the equivalent of like Monster or Indeed or whatever mm-hmm. it was, that's how I would be getting my first clients. Uh, and then well, I ended up doing that, not quite full time, but while I was in a grad school. So I had a full-time grad school load and I was working. And um, while I was in grad school, I also started something called a user group, which uh, was something in, in the Adobe community. Well, the, at the time, the Macromedia community, where it's, it, it, it's basically a group of people who are interested in the same software. And I got like a, it's not really a franchise, but I got permission from Macromedia to do it. So I, you know, I got their resources and bonuses so I could run this community. And by running this community, which at one point was the largest in the country, I started building up a network and connections and a reputation throughout the Los Angeles area. And that made it a lot easier for me to go in and get someone like Apple as a client. And then once I had a roster of clients like that, it became easier uh, to turn it into a, a larger agency where I wasn't the only one doing all the work. So that's the, the very uh, not short answer to your question. No, that's, I mean, it's important because there's a, I think the lesson there is, uh, and by the way, the same time period right after fallout of, you know, the dot com, I think I got in the mortgage industry for a while or so. I don't know what that timing was. No. Yeah, that's what it was. And next thing I know, I'm uh, in law school. <laughs> and I'm like, I remember being in law school in the evenings and running my, and I had a company at the time myself doing payroll what, and not paying attention. I'm like, what am I doing in this? And then, anyway, so I, I, the point of the story is you're going to take all kinds of paths and turns as a, uh, as an entrepreneur and it's never going to be direct. It's not going to be a straight path, but the idea is learn to let go of a, a bad debt, uh, or, or, a, you know, a bad job or you know, like I got out of law school. I can't believe I left it. And so, you know, it's like, you just do that because you just know it's not the right path and, and don't, mm-hmm. don't kid yourself. Now, if you're a month from graduating, get it done, fine, you know, get the value. But if you're, you're on a path and you're quickly seeing it's not right, course correct. It's yeah. one of the skills you'll need for an entrepreneur anyway. It's just- Well, that was another good thing about an MBA, at least on the, going on the full-time schedule. It was only two years. Yeah. 
Well, it, it will exactly. And so, you know, it, and you get your first customers in there. And the other thing you talked about is you built a brand around it. You built a network of some sort. You added value to a user group. And I would say if you're looking for your first customers, if, if you're an entrepreneur or you're maybe just starting, and if you already have customers, you don't have to worry about this, but maybe you're trying to fire a side hustle, is take your network you have now and find the first few to get your 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 offer in front of and see if they accept it. You know, it's I think it's easier to build a side hustle that becomes your full-time thing, leveraging your, uh, I call it your angel investor, your employer, uh, yeah, to, to fund it. So effectively, just Work the bare minimum to keep your job because you know in your mind as soon as you have enough customers, you're out. But yeah, so but in contrast with Shield Your Body, uh, a lot of things were different, but it's a completely different type of business, right? So there's product design, uh, there's packaging design, there's merchandising, there's uh, this whole mar marketing that I, you know, I had to do a certain type of marketing for a service business, but for consumer product, it's totally different. Totally different. Yep. So the point being, I basically had no skills required to start Shield Your Body, uh, and certainly not the same network uh, that could could help me. And so, in that instance, I piggybacked off of Amazon. Uh, now, Amazon these days is a is a almost a nothing channel for us. But for the first several years of SYB, that was exactly how I launched it. Is I would get onto Amazon. I learned the the, the things you needed to do to succeed on Amazon. And I got it going and I was able to get revenue in the door. And that then over time allowed me to expand my product catalog, allowed me to expand, start building a real website to start building my own brand separate from Amazon and so on and so forth. And now with Healthier Tech, um, I am using the Shield Your Body community email list platform to launch this, this new entity. So, so there are, there, in each instance, there were different resources that I had available to me that I was able to piece together in order to get some initial traction. You know, it, you make a great point. So in, in any industry, whether it be products or services, you're going to likely leverage some other existing platform to find your market. So LinkedIn, Amazon, mm -hmm. Facebook, whatever, Meta. Take the time to build your own list over time, because when you can figure out a way to direct sell them without having to leverage or be you know, at the mercy of being kicked off of the platform or spending 40% on in commissions to Amazon or whatever it'll be, you're going to be able to be more competitive on price and value, likely charge the same thing and make more and have, have to sell less to, to get yeah, to, own the, yeah, to your, own the relationship, which is, exactly. which is very valuable. So uh, I always ask, what do you, what's one thing you wish you had known now before becoming an entrepreneur or had known then, I should say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much I would care about money when I hit this age, like when I was younger. Well, so like when I graduated college, I had the chance, many multiple opportunities to go work on Wall Street. When I got my MBA, I had multiple opportunities to go work in either consulting or in tech. And at both points in time, it was just super easy for me to say, no, I'm going to do my own thing because I wasn't thinking about money. And I'm not, I'm not to say, this is not to say that I regret these decisions, but I will say that I would discount how important money really becomes later in life <laughs> compared to in your twenties. And that, so at least that I could make those decisions with, with, with more information. Yeah, I, I, I would agree. Uh, as you get older and you have more Debts that aren't debts, like you know, it's not, well, they are, but like mortgages or you know kids or whatever it is, and just mm -hmm. looking at like, hey, I can't do this forever. How am I going to survive? I, you know, cause you definitely would keep. The, I, I, one of the things I definitely coach on is reduce your debt to zero if possible, and uh, you know, abide by the laws of compound interest, where you look at that future money you need as a debt. Yeah, didn't do it well enough myself. Definitely, you know, you're scrambling in your forties to kind of catch up with it. You know, but the idea is. Even if you're going to be wildly successful, having a plan in place where you have something you just completely forget about and leave it out there um, mm -hmm. from an investment standpoint is the thing you need to do in your 20s. Because like that first 20s, if you can keep it lean, that first five, seven years of, of really, if you pump savings away and never add it to it again, you'll be so much happier you did when you're in your 50s. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, don't drain the 401k. But, you know, that dot com killed us all. We had to drain some things to keep things going back then. Yeah. What's one thing you wish you would have not have done? prior to becoming an entrepreneur or starting your venture? Not done. 
Oh, wow. One thing I wish I had not done. But who prepared for the interview? Okay. You remember that? That would tie it back to what you said. He's not prepared. Well. Oh, I see. You know, no, I, I, I was just following your lead. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> this is my example. I caught. No, one thing I wish I had not done. Yeah, that one's that uh, actually when right before we were we started recording, I had a good one, a good answer ready on that one, and um, and now I seem to have lost it. I, I'm glad that you're going to edit out all this stumbling. So Definitely it not. Make me look better. It's going to be right uh, in there. Yeah. <laughs> Did you wish you had not have forgotten your uh, your memory pills? Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, but I had not done. Well, I, oh, I remember what I was thinking of because earlier. So this, okay, so this is an example. And this is from Healthier Tech, not from any of the earlier stuff. When I, because when you just asked me that question, I was flashing back to my 20s. I'm like, who the heck remembers any of that? Uh, but, but the answer I want to give you is from Healthier Tech because that's much more recent. And uh, when I was starting Healthier Tech, well, I told you we already had the podcast. And I was like, well, what we need to do is turn this into its own brand. And so what are we going to do with this brand to make money? And with SYB, we've been making products to, to make money. And so the initial thought was, well, let's make a different catalog of products. And so we, we made a product. We put research into other products. We started designing another product from scratch. And it, it was only later where we realized, well, we have these courses, let's move them into the new brand. Let's get more of these courses in place. Let's run live events like the summit. And in the end, it, it, it turned into a content brand, both free and monetized content. And so in, at the end of the day, or sitting here right now, I wish I had not spent all that time and money trying to build a catalog of products for healthier tech, just on the assumption that that's what we know how to do. But at the same time, you know, you kind of have to throw everything at the wall or everything that you can afford to, both in, in terms of time and money, to see what actually sticks. Because the goal with healthier tech was never to sell a specific thing. The goal with healthier tech has been to create a standalone brand that communicates a very positive message to a very broad audience uh, so that it can, it can be standalone on revenue on its own terms, but also help build out uh, the reach of the shield your body side. So, but originally in my head, I'd gotten it, I'd gotten it into my head. Well, that means it's going to be a catalog of products, not the same kind that we have at SYB, but it's, on, and then we just couldn't find the right kind of product for us. And eventually we realized it was staring us right in the face. It's all this content that we're working on. You, you make a good point, uh, or it, it's an interesting idea, because this is what happens when you start your own business. A lot of times you do what you know, or for what you came from, from your job. Mm -hmm. And it's just because of what you know, what you know, the advice I, I tell a lot of people too is do not go repeat the same job you had. You're leaving that because you don't like it. But if you do some of the same activities with your own spin, then, then it's a different job. Yeah. Uh, for you, you're like, oh, we'll, just, we'll expand what we have. Well, that doesn't create that third ancillary thing. What you mm -hmm. did, what you pivoted to smartly was what else sells, right? You're around and the digital, digital is the way to go. The lesson there, I think, is take your time to look bigger than your own bubble. And, and that, that'll give me my final question of how you're preparing for the future with, you know, are you seeking mentorship? Uh, are you, you know, taking classes? What, what are you doing to, you know, your time zero right now, like you were when you started a company. Now you're, yeah. how, are you, how are you preparing for the future? So on the healthier tech side, again, I'll focus the answer there. We are working to find, well, we, we're, we're already in discussions with some. So the healthier tech summit of, of this year was a four-day event. We like how the summit went for us. I don't like that it was a four-day event. So we're planning now to run multiple one-day events. And for each one, we want to find partners that uh, either bring content or audience, content specialization or audience or both that are relevant to healthier tech. And then we can run these events together. So that is, that is uh, an active task right now is mapping out uh, the, the summit schedule for 2024. 2025, and then thinking how all of that integrates into our, co our growing course library, because the summits have to sell the courses, the courses have to sell the summits, the podcast can be feeder for both, and so, forth, so on and so forth. And the other thing that we're doing is investing time into figuring out marketing funnels that work for courses. Because again, this is very different from physical product on the Shield Your Body side. 
And we, we have new tools in place that are only in place for the past couple of months since we've run the summit. And by tools, I mean the entire training platform. And we have everything up and running. But now once you have everything up and running, that's just the start of when you start to have the opportunity to do the deployments and the experimentation to see what actually begins to work. Interesting. The, um, the planning for the future sometimes is a little stressful because it's, it's the uncertainty knowing in the past that like, oh, I don't want to screw this up. You know, it's like you put, invest the money in you. But you did a good thing, which is you're, you're, take, you're building upon a small step first. You did a small thing. So what you liked, you didn't like about it. Did you do any surveys with the customers, what they liked? Like the one thing they liked, the one thing they wish they had seen and the one thing- In the uh, summit we did. In the yeah, summit, you did that. Did. I think yeah. it's like customer feedback, customer voice is everything. Uh, listening to it is probably even more important than capturing it. It's one thing to capture and never do. No, no, uh, no. No, no. It's just capturing it. Once just capture it, don't ever, it. Don't ever act on it? No, I mean, yeah. Why would you, right? Yeah. You're Steve Jobs. You're dressed like Steve Jobs today, all black. No, it's not a turtleneck. It's a button. It's a button. Let me tell you, I think you're a priest. I was looking for the white collar. I was going to ask you later about it, but I already did. All right. Listen, I want you to know right in this moment, this is, this is a critical moment. Mm-hmm. We're about to go hot seat. But I want everyone to know that Healthier Tech did not sponsor this episode, healthiertech.co. That's healthiertech.co, did not sponsor it. So I'm going to allow him anyway. I'm just kidding. Plug your show right in the middle of this thing right now. Go ahead and plug whatever you want to plug. You got 30 seconds. Oh, sure. Well, the Healthier Tech podcast, we come out weekly. Uh, we're now in our third season. I think we just released episode 80. And we interview a wide variety of people. We try to keep the episode short and snappy, way shorter, snappier than like what Tom here is doing. And, <laughs> but like uh, I said, we, we had an EU member of parliament on, we've had a Nobel prize winning scientist on, we've had multiple scientists, multiple doctors, we have entrepreneurs, uh, uh, technologists, engineers, and each week we get one voice in and they can talk about where their, their area of, it. oh man, we got this guy on who, who invented uh, a device that allows deaf people to hear concerts. Uh, through vibrate haptic feedback on body suits. I mean, we we talk about really cool things. I mean, the thing with healthier tech is it's not just about addressing uh, the problems um, that have emerged in a relationship with technology. It's also about addressing some of the really cool things that technology has enabled us to happen. So that's at healthiertech.co. It's the Healthier Tech podcast, and we're on uh, Apple and Spotify and Google and Amazon and everywhere else you'd get uh, get really fine podcasts. That was longer than 30 seconds. Yeah. That's okay. Are you going to be adult film stars or adult industry stars on there? That's interesting. I guess in the context of VR goggles, we could, we could do something. Or body suits. That's what I was thinking. Like, I'm surprised that the CES, you know, entertainment piece, like, you know, there's got to be a, anyway, I don't want to take a turn. Hot seat time. If I was cool, I'd have a graphic and some kind of transition music, but I don't. So here we go. You ready for the hot seat? Uh, does it matter? be clear, I, uh, I use this data so I can go find sponsors for the show. So please do your best. Hot okay. seat. What's your favorite calendar scheduling technology? Uh, Google. Well, there's Google Calendar and Calendly. You got to pick. Calendly. Done. Favorite CRM? Uh, Zoho. Interesting. Favorite business book? The Goal. Who, write, yeah, who wrote The Goal? I don't remember who wrote, I don't remember the name, but the, uh, uh, the, the key lesson is uh, you got to make money. It's all about money, baby. It's all about well. I mean, there's me no business. There's no business if you don't make money. That's that. That was the message of the book, and it, it, it wasn't. It wasn't superficial. It was actually the first book we had to read in business school. Interesting. The goal. All right. Uh, what's your favorite quote? Oh, uh, man, I don't have one. I want to fill one in for you. Do or do not. There is no try. Okay. Little Yoda. Uh, who's your favorite up and coming person on LinkedIn to follow? Uh, Scott Shoot. Scott Shute. What's Scott Shute do? Scott Shute. Uh, S-C-H-U-T-E. He used to be a VP of, oh, I forget his actual title. It was super cool. So he was a VP at LinkedIn and he brought in workplace wellness and mindfulness practices. Um, he has since left uh, LinkedIn and he's working on Changing Work, which I think is changingwork.org. Uh, and it's about deploying these practices that make workplaces more human. What's your favorite bank? Ha. Okay. Normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't answer that, but these days I, I actually, for you. no, these days I actually have one and it's Relay Financial. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and it's uh, because it just because I, I, I basically use it just to send wires. And for thirty dollars a month, I can send as many wires anywhere in the world, no fee. Uh, whereas at, at any other bank I bank at, it's either twenty five or thirty five dollars to send, another twenty five or thirty five dollars to receive, and it's always a hassle. So Re- Relay Financial is the first bank that I've ever worked with where I signed up for a specific reason and it does that reason and it's great. That's awesome. It helps because you're in Panama and all the drug dealing that goes on there. I'm sure your accounts aren't watched with all the wires you're sending. Well, as long as they're under $9,999.99. Don't be stacking. There's, a, there's an IRA. Anyway. All right. Last question. I think you already answered. Have you ever been promoted? Uh, no. Amen, brother. You're part of the club. You're, yeah. <laughs> you're in. All right. Hey, Bob, listen, uh, thank you so much, R, for joining. Uh, y- any special giveaways, offers? I know you, you, you had one there, but do you, anywhere, where should people go to get a hold of you? Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, healthiertech.co, and we have a contact form there on the site. And do you, do the, uh, the, the BOGO options are being deployed to our site right now. So by the time this episode comes out, any course on our site, and we have a bunch of them, including the summit replays, They're buy one, get one, which is a great holiday gift. So you can get yourself the content and give it away to a friend for the same, the same fee. Awesome. I'm going to air this December 26th. So this would be perfect timing. Excellent. We're going to get this thing out. It's got pressure now. You put pressure on it. Our thanks for joining today, the Never Been Promoted podcast, uh, where we help you unleash your entrepreneurial journey and get you out there to become the entrepreneur you want to. So thank you again for joining. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Until next time, have a good night. Thanks for listening to Never Been Promoted with Thomas Helfrich. Make sure to check the show notes for our guest contact information and any relevant links. Connect with Thomas personally at neverbeenpromoted.com.